Ross Chastain's team owner, Justin Marks, admits they've had difficult conversations this week and says Ross has some things he needs to clean up. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Before we get into the latest news, I want to shout out real quick the latest Moonshine and Motorsports Trail video I uploaded last night. I'll link the full playlist down in the description below, but now we visited RFK Racing, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame. Now add the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame, as well as Petty's Garage and the Petty Museum. You won't want to miss the latest episode. Again, that link, all those videos, all those great stops are down in the description below. Sunday's race at Darlington ended with two of the fastest drivers and cars all season long crashing out while racing for the win. Points leader Ross Chastain was once again in the middle of it, sliding up the racetrack and ultimately hooking himself into the outside wall. He was upset with how Kyle Larson had squeezed him the restart previously and just overdrove it, misjudged a bit. Wrecked himself out and also ultimately cost Kyle Larson a shot at the win. After the race, a different Hendrick car still won, William Byron, so Rick Hendrick, Kyle Larson's team owner, was in the media center answering questions and he had some pretty strong opinions on Ross Chastain. He's got so much talent. I think if he just calmed down that uh, there's a time to race. Dale Earnhardt uh, told me, Dale Earnhardt Sr. told me one time, he said, you know, I won't name the driver who drove for me, but he said, uh, you know, he's got all the talent. He just doesn't know how to race. And, uh, and meaning he just knows when to race, when to push it. He's got a lot of talent, but he's making a lot of enemies. It's really getting old with these guys. NBC reporter Dustin Long asking some very good questions. Rick Hendrick talking about Chevy, since both Hendrick and Trackhouse get significant Chevy support. I don't care if he's driving a Chevrolet if he wrecks our cars. I don't care, and I've told Chevrolet that. If you wreck us, you're going to get it back. I'm, I'm loyal to Chevrolet, but when somebody runs over us, then I expect my guys to hold their ground. It's pretty rare these days to see Rick Hendrick be this upset with another driver. That's about as much emotion as I think we can expect him to show. He concluded his remarks by saying that he would think Justin Marks, Ross Chastain's team owner, would have a conversation with Ross at some point. And it appears that point has finally come. Yesterday, Justin Marks was on Sirius XM NASCAR radio and explained that he and Ross Chastain, as well as other members of the team, perhaps manufacturer sponsors, partners, They've had some very difficult conversations early this week. Justin Mark said, quote, This has been my life today. We have addressed it. We have had many conversations with different people today. Some difficult conversations. I think the important message here is that we are a believer in Ross's talent. That's obvious. He's very fast. But he's got some things he's got to clean up. I'll just be totally honest with you. And today, we started the process of more aggressively handling that with our partners, with Ross, and with our team. Not because necessarily that we're mad at him, but because there's so much opportunity here. So much opportunity. And that's something I'll talk about more in a moment. Ross Chastain, I know I said this on Sunday, he's leading the points. He made it to the championship four late last year, but he has not won a race now in over a year. Trackhouse as a company is closing in on one whole year without winning a Cup Series race. They're fast, sure, but Ross Chastain has left some wins on the table. That's the opportunity Justin Marks is talking about that Ross Chastain at some points has failed to capitalize on. But Justin Marks does continue. I want to read the rest of this statement. Marks said, quote, I love the kid and I love the opportunity he's giving every single person who works at Trackhouse to be able to put a championship run together. There's just stuff that needs to be cleaned up and it's a process he's going to have to start going through sooner rather than later. We are very supportive of him, we are very supportive of this team, and we are addressing it. Again, that was Justin Marks, Ross Chastain's team owner, singing a very different tune about Ross Chastain than he has previously. I played that press conference clip of Rick Hendrick first because, say what you will about Mr. H, he has a ton of influence. He's got clout within the garage, within Chevrolet, and you wonder, Justin Marks, for the past year or so, has been defending Ross, defending his driver. This time around, he admits that something needs to change. 
Did someone get to Justin Marks? Did Chevy? Did Rick Hendrick? Did someone involve one of Trackhouse's key partners? Did they finally get to Justin Marks and convince him that, hey, we're not okay with this. You need to say something. You and your team need to take a stand. It's hurting Chevrolet more broadly. I don't know, but the timing is certainly interesting. That's why I played the Rick Hendrick clip first. You know, Cliff Daniels, Kyle Larson's crew chief, also call on Chevrolet on the radio after the incident saying, hey Chevy, that's three times now Ross Chastain has wrecked a Chevy teammate, us. So yeah, you definitely wonder if Chevrolet uh, got in Justin Marks, got in Trackhouse's ear and said, hey, you do need to talk to Ross Chastain. Like this has gone too far for us as a manufacturer, as a larger company. It's a little speculation, it's a conspiracy theory, but you gotta wonder. Anyway, I read you Justin Marks' comments. Yeah, Ross Chastain is talented, but he needs to clean things up. There's too much opportunity here. We've had difficult conversations. There's a process that Ross is gonna need to go through sooner rather than later. He needs to change. I think deep down, Justin Marks has probably felt this way about Ross Chastain for like almost a year, like basically starting at Gateway last June. But Justin Marks is still a young team owner representing a young team working with a young driver who just got in competitive equipment for the first time in his NASCAR career. The last thing Justin Marks wanted to do was hurt Ross Chastain's confidence. Priority number one for Justin Marks was making sure that his new driver, Ross Chastain, knew that he had his team's support. They were going to back him up come hell or high water, no matter what. For so many drivers, especially this day and age in NASCAR, where contracts are much shorter term, sponsors could dip, could dive at any point, knowing your team has your back, that stability, that confidence can go a long way. That's why I believe anytime the media asked, hey, Justin, have you talked to Ross Chastain? He wrecked Denny Hamlin again today. You know, he got involved with another driver. There was another incident. Justin Marks was always quick to defend Ross. You know, he would point out that, yeah, you know, Ross maybe needs to be a little more selective. Sometimes, sure, he's a little aggressive, what have you, but we love it. We love it. We have his back. We'll always support him. Justin Marks has always defended Ross Chastain. These are the first comments we've heard from Justin where he admits that, no, we need to change our approach significantly. This was not good, what happened at Darling last week. So the change in tune is a bit surprising, but I think Justin Marks always kind of believed that behind the scenes, but being a smart, savvy businessman, leader, working with people, I think he was saying all the right things publicly, probably even privately, to ensure Ross Chastain and this new team didn't have their confidence damaged. And honestly, I think Justin Marks probably made the right decision. I think Justin Marks has handled Ross Chastain very well this past year. I don't think there's a better way he could have done it. It's why I wonder if now, why is this the incident that pushed him over the line? Is it because maybe it cost Trackhouse a win? You know, if Ross Chastain wasn't so preoccupied with getting Larson back, pinching him into the wall, maybe he races Larson straight up and beats him. And that's a win for Trackhouse, their first win in almost a year. Chastain's locked into the playoffs, five key playoff points. Maybe that's the straw that broke the camel's back. It cost the team a win potentially, or potentially it was Rick Hendrick going to Chevrolet or Chevrolet taking things into their own hands saying, hey, Justin, you gotta do something about this guy. He wrecked not just himself, but a fellow Chevy teammate. We don't like that. I don't know. I said this on Sunday, but personally, I agree with Justin Marks' comments. I do think it's time for Ross Chastain to change just a little bit. You don't want to change everything about Ross Chastain because, like Justin Marks says, he does have a ton of raw talent. Dude won two races last year, first year with a new team, made it all the way to the championship four. He hasn't won this year, but he's still leading the points right now. There's a lot about Ross Chastain that works, but some changes are needed because while he's leading the points, made a deep playoff run, he's not winning races. And as we already said, he's leaving race wins potentially on the table. And I believe eventually his reputation will catch up to him. And it could cost him a race win down the line. It could possibly cost him a championship. A lot of folks compare Ross Chastain to a slightly younger Joey Logano and you know, say what you will about whether Matt Kenseth was right or wrong in 2015, Joey Logano might be a three-time champion today if he dialed back the aggression just a bit during those earlier years. Not saying anyone's gonna pile drive Ross Chastain into the outside wall at Martinsville, but 
you already see drivers racing him differently. And you could hear over the radio at the end of the race this past Sunday, Chastain was fixated on whether he and Kyle Larson were even. Oh, do you think Larson's gonna get me back? He was worried about revenge retaliation even before the final couple of restarts. And to me, that's no way to think if you're going for wins or going for championships. That's an unnecessary distraction that you can avoid. So I said it on Sunday, I'll say it again now. I do think Ross Chastain needs to make some changes. You don't want to dial everything back because some aggression in this modern age with stronger bodies, next-gen cars, overtime restarts, stage restarts, short tracks, road courses, you need some aggression to be good in NASCAR today. I mean, I commented on Joey Logano, maybe lost the 2015 championship. He might have won the 2019 championship because he was willing to bump Martin Truex Jr. on the last lap at Martinsville. You need some aggression, but you need to know when to ramp it up and when to dial it back. When is the risk worth the reward? And when are you just pushing too hard and potentially making a careless and avoidable mistake? Really interesting though to hear Justin Marks' comments just 24 hours after Rick Hendrick, fellow Chevrolet team owner, had some very strong words of his own. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think Ross Chastain needs to change at all? Maybe just dial some of the aggression back? Do you think it's possible for Ross Chastain to dial some aggression back? Or do you think it's it's kind of all or nothing with him? Could this be a big risk Justin Marks and Chevy are taking by asking Ross to change? What do you think down in the comment section below? I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that is going to do it for this episode. If you liked what you heard, please leave a like. If you didn't like, I appreciate you listening all the way to the end. If you're new to the channel and you love NASCAR, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you stay in the loop on all the latest news. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your very generous support. Once again, be sure to check out that North Carolina racing video series. A lot of great history, a lot of fun cameos from people a whole lot smarter than I am sharing some of their racing knowledge, telling some of their stories. Be sure to go check uh, that series of videos out. Again, NASCAR Hall of Fame, North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame, RFK Racing, a little behind the scenes look, Petty's Garage. Be sure to check it out. A whole lot more coming down the pipeline very soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode, folks.